What's going on guys, Victor here, and check out this view behind me. We are on Catalina Island. We got Dylan. What's up guys? And Adam back there eating a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Lunch and time. We are actually camping here for the next 72 hours, right? 63. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Exactly. Yeah, over just there. kidding, just kidding. <laughs> just but yeah, we got Brookie right there. Hello. And this is actually really exciting because Brooke and I have never been here. If you guys ever come to Southern California, everyone says you gotta do the island. So Adam, who has a channel by the way, Fluent Fishing, you guys can find that link below. He's got an 18 foot parker. We actually, we took the express boat over here. Adam took his boat. We got it on the beach. We just unloaded. We got our whole campsite set up right here. We brought the grills, some sleeping bags, propane tank. And we're basically just gonna live off the land for the next 72 or 63 hours, try to catch leopard <laughs> sharks, lobster, um, yellowtail, calico bass, sheep's head, all different kinds of things. And the best part about this trip, even if we don't catch nothing, is look at that view. This is literally from our cot cabin right here. Absolutely gorgeous. We'll catch you guys out there. Told you Adam brought the boat. Very lucky for us. <laughs> he's got the wetsuit on and he's gonna swim it out there, bring it to us. We're gonna hop on and it's the way to live out here. So there's this parker right over there. You safe out there, bud? Don't you like this? He does all the dirty work. Yeah, I know. Making it easy for me. Stay bundled up like an Eskimo. All right, we just got picked up at the beach. Look at this. I didn't know, but the water is crystal clear here in Catalina Island. You guys, I'm bent. Look at this. My first ever Catalina Island fish right here, which is a calico bass. These are the coolest little fish. These are basically your largemouth bass of salt water. Very prevalent in Southern California. You can kind of lip them like that. How pretty is that? They got like this cool iridescence about them. They got these bars. Um, they grow really slowly too from what the boys tell me, but first fish of the day. And I'll show you guys exactly what we're doing. I have a complete fly line as they call it. So that basically just means a flat line. We call it in Florida. They call it a fly line over here. 1-0 mustad hook, 25 pound tough line fluoro. And I hook my sardine right here in the nose and he can swim real good. And there's just like this rock structure. There's kelp patties over here, there's reef. And we're just drifting our baits back. Dylan and Brooke have a weight on theirs. And we're just sending it back there, seeing what bites. Yes. Looks like it. Oh, it's yes. a cuda. Oh, yeah. <laughs> First Pacific Barracuda. I was just, we were about to switch spots because we got off of our anchor. And I was just left my sardine out there on top and something came up and smoked it. And they have a different species of barracuda than we have in Florida. This is a Pacific barracuda. Those barracuda gotta be 28 inches to keep and that one's pretty close. Dude, these things are fun. Are they schooling fish, Dylan? Yeah, there's one, there's a lot more. He's got a really yellow tail too. See if you can bounce him when you get him close and we'll measure him. If he's a keeper, let's keep him, why not? He's close. Wow. But not quite. He looks short, but we'll measure him. So perfectly. different. I just want to get him in the boat just to kind of yeah. show him. Up and over. You got it, up and over. He's stinky, so it's worth it for the video. That might be. He's, he's close. Yeah. You guys, this is the coolest barracuda I've ever seen. You guys see us catch these in Florida. Look at this thing. It is like a mixture of a snook with a barracuda, a senate, wild looking. They got purple hues in them. They got a yellow tail. Very aggressive fish too, super cool. 
Here's a measuring tape over here too if you want to check him if he's legal. My first one. Dylan says they got to be 28. Let's see if he's legal. Yeah. What do you say? Oh, he's a keeper. He's yeah. a keeper. Yeah, he's 29. All right, boys. Keeper. So you told me that there's like a big misconception that these are from trash fish in California, right? Uh, totally, totally. The outside of their skin is a little bit smelly um, and they get a bad reputation because of that. But once you cut them, they smell delicious and they're great to eat. They don't smell. Our barracuda smell, and that's why people in Florida don't like them. These guys, it's like a tenth of the smell. You know, this really? one is particularly yes. not very smelly. Usually, as soon as you pull it over the, <laughs> dude, tell me. Like, as soon as you pull it over the rail, usually you can like smell it from the other side of the boat. <laughs> He's pulling drag. You're recording on this side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Update us, what we got? I don't know. What do we got here? Another big Little right? kudo. Another kudo on the A rig. I was I got someone's line too. I switched that from the. Uh, my line. No, it's all good. Check that out. Who's line? Legal Kuda, Adam. Legal Kuda on the A ring. That's sick. He thumped it. That was awesome. Check that one out. Legal Dude, line. that's sick. Look at that crazy contraption of a lure you got there. Yeah, so these these are pretty well known with like the bass guys um, and a lot of the calico fishermen here love fishing the A rig. Um, I'm surprised you haven't seen them before. I, I bet the guys in Florida fish them for largemouth. Yeah, fun. true. But it obviously works great for um, for saltwater species. Also, anything will eat it. It just mimics kind of a little uh, school of bait, right? little school of bait exactly. And in California, you can have three hooks on it. So I got three of them hooked right there, and then I just put you know other little willow leaf, little blade up there just to make it look like a school of bait. But fooled him. You're a bad little pup. Go away. We got sharks in Florida, they got sea lions over here, but sea lions are little punks. He's literally sitting there underneath the boat just staring at us. So we had this dropper loop rod set out just on the bottom the whole time. I was about to wind it up because it was at a weird angle and there's some head shaking on the other end. So let's see what kind of critter we got. It feels kind of nice. Oh, it's sheep head. Is it? Some kind yes. of sheep head, male nice. sheep head. Oh, oh no, <gasps> oh, go, 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 Sea lion. Oh, dude, that's a wow. nice one. Oh, go ahead and stick it. <laughs> Good job, Adam. All right, nice look at him. Guys. Little male sheep head right there. Well, Dylan just caught a absolutely gorgeous fish. Nice they got fish. a they got a fish called a sheep head. We have a fish called a sheep's head in Florida. It doesn't look like our sheep's head. It looks like more like a hogfish, like a wrasse. Really cool fish. Big crustacean eaters. Um, last time we were here in California in July, we caught some, but that's a really good size one. Yeah. This guy is a California sheep head. You can see the black stripes. That indicates that he is a male sheep head. Um, they're a hermaphroditic fish, so they're all born females. And within their like schools, the bigger, more dominant ones will get the black coloration to them and they'll become the males. So they, uh, they can switch genders and it's usually the bigger ones that you get these black colors to them, the males. Nice fight. He had uh, some good head shakes yeah. on him. That was a fun little battle. Knew he was a nice fish for sure. Yeah. Nice job. Isn't Dylan good on camera, guys? You guys <laughs> comment below. Like this video right now if you like Dylan on camera. Yeah, and follow me on Instagram. At D Dupree. Yep. Uh, my first initial last name at D Dupree. There we go. He stuck that time. Nice. I think. Yeah, he did. This is feeling more like a, a calico or something. I don't know. We'll see. Trick is get him in before the sea lions do. Yeah, you thought you got away from that. With the sharks. Yeah, coming to California. Oh, no! Sea lion? Sea lion saw it. Oh, dude, it's a uh, bonito! Bonito! <laughs> Guys, look at this crazy looking fish. Brick and I have caught these in the Atlantic, much bigger. And I remember they were some of our favorite eating fish. This is an actual bonito, like B-O-N-I-T-O. We, on the Atlantic, what we call false albacore, we call them bonita. This is an actual bonita right here. Gorgeous little guy. Look at those look, crazy little look at teeth. His mouth. Like this is a like healed over wound. Look at that. Oh wow, yeah. That right there. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Kind of almost looks like a salmon mouth with the way it's healed over. And this is what we're fishing this morning. Adam went and picked up a bunch of sardines. And we hook them right here in the nose, just like that, and just fly line them right behind the boat.
We've been uh, throwing a little bit more chum and the bass are starting to get with it a little bit better with these uh, wind with current. Um, we have better conditions than we did earlier for sure. And just kind of burning through this bait, you know, it's not gonna live overnight. So let's just use it while we got it and have some fun, pull on some bass. Dang, look at that. So this is kind of new for you guys back at home. In California, they have what's called kelp. And this stuff attaches to the ground and it's got a bunch of little air pockets like that. So it'll suspend like a forest. Really cool um, part of their fishery and part of their ecosystem. And white sea bass, calico bass, um, all sorts of predatory fish and even bait will hide in this stuff. And that's basically like the foundation of their fishery. A lot of times when this stuff floats up, they look for it offshore. Like we look for our sargasm weed for dolphin. They'll look for this stuff and they'll find dolphin in it. Dorado, as they call them on this coast, and Yellowtail. It's just always neat to see how, you know, the ecosystem changes when you go from coast to coast. They, do, they don't want the live bait, they want your, <laughs> your surface iron. Well, I was, I was letting you guys use the rest of the live bait since we're running out, so I was just, you know, throwing the surface iron off the off the side here. Second fish on it. Oh, there we go. It's oh, nice hooking them on the, on the irons because you don't have to get your hands slimy. You can just grab right here. Pull them on up, but nice, another barracuda. Not a yellowtail, but I'll take. That's a keeper. Yeah, too. that's another keeper. Right? Was that three for three on keeper? Yeah. All nice. Awesome. Very cool. I love it when they eat the surface iron. You can just feel that thing kicking out there, and they just slam it. That one actually knocks slack into the line. He came at it so fast, but we'll unhook this guy and send him on his way, and make a few more casts before heading in for some dinner. I like the sound of that. We're all a little hungry here. <laughs> Alright guys, we just got back from Catalina Island. There is the sheep head, which I'm not going to flay and cook up, but Brookie is in her video, which you guys can find her channel, link below. But we're going to make a little Pacific Barracuda tonight. So that's this fish that we caught on that little multi-species Catalina sesh. I'm going to use an 8 inch Dexter flexible fillet. And this cuda is kind of getting soft on us. He's been sitting in a fish bag for 48 hours now. Predix, actually not kind of, I am excited to see what, what this is about. I think it's gonna be pretty similar to our barracuda. Morphology, very similar. Our barracuda got a pretty big rib cage, just like the specific one. There we go. Look at that. It actually looks identical to our Atlantic Barracuda, dude. Oh, Seriously, like identical. Even like the fillet structure, pretty much the exact same ribs, pin bones, the same kind of uh, thickness of the backbone. Pretty cool to see. The difference between coast to coast is not that much at all, actually. Okay, so I'm just knocking off the skin off of the second side. There we go. Real nice flesh on this guy. All right, so we got the barracuda, just lightly seasoned with some salt, pepper, garlic powder. Gonna put a little oil in our pan right here on the Camp Chef burner. This Camp Chef burner came in real handy when we, came, when we brought it to Catalina Island. So we're gonna do a high heat sear on this guy. our Pacific Barracuda. We also have a little zucchini right here with some salt, pepper, and garlic powder. We're gonna go on the barbecue grill box. Camp Chef barbecue grill box. Close this bad boy. Oh yeah. Good little sear, got some color on there. Barracuda is looking real good. Don't be afraid to cook with some heat. See those grill marks? Oh yeah. Oh, 
Look at that. I actually really like working with Barracuda, even our Florida Barracuda. This Pacific Barracuda also looks really good. We're gonna go in with some butter in the same pan we just cooked our fish in. As well as some shallots, as Gordon Ramsay would say. Nothing like the smell of onions and butter. Do it out loud. Biggest pet peeve of mine, overcooked vegetables. You can eat vegetables raw. Look at that. Don't overcook your vegetables. We've been eating out a lot. You know, we've been here for a week now and we haven't had very many home cooked meals. We had a couple of Catalino, but it's gonna be a nice light dinner. So kind of freshen it up. We just have a little tomato orange salad literally just tossed in orange juice and then some orange chunks as well zucchini is going to be our carb of choice instead of a green something like rice or pasta you know keep it kind of low carb and light put a little piece of fish right on top of our zucchini and tomato and then here we have a little shallot butter this is super rich stuff. So we're just gonna spoon a little bit of it on to our fish. I hope one barracuda fed all four of us. I was trying to say I don't know how to cook a zucchini. Get <laughs> away with those Dude, knives, boy. Every time you've ever cooked me anything, it was amazing. So I don't need to point a knife at you either. So Well, you're pointing several at me. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Zucchini's cutting just fine, isn't it, Brooke? Yep. Yeah. This is That's so good. Oh, that one's yours. Wow. So let's go, let's go to mine. Let's see. Let's see. Let's leave out the zucchini. You only ever had barracuda smoked, right, Dylan? Um, this is true. So I'll, I'll do everything at once and see how this mix of stuff is. Um, I think I might have had barracuda like soaked in milk or something. That's that's like really a thing here in SoCal. To, I don't know, mild, mild it out because it's kind of known as a gamey fish. But um, seeing it cooked after, this thing looks amazing. So let's see how it tastes. Mm. We just had some Thresher Shark a couple days ago, and this is a lot softer than the Thresher Shark, but eat for flavor, I might even prefer the Barracuda. Um, I know it's shark versus fish, but just flavor in general. It's really good. Yeah? Yeah. Very, very moist. It's not dried out at all. You definitely cooked it really well. I like that shallow butter. Mm. So good. Very delicious. I don't think I've ever eaten barracuda, so this is probably the first time I've ever tried it. Damn, how long you live in Cali? Uh, my, my whole life. My whole life. How many first barracuda time? have you caught? Uh, infinity. But infinity and beyond? Infinity. There are a lot of them. It's, it's known, I'm sure in Florida it's the same thing, it's known as a trash fish, so. Big time. Um, I don't know if it has something to do with the way that people keep them, throwing them in the gunny sacks and letting them soak in the sun all day, but this one was bled, put on ice right away, so. And you know something funny too? The barracuda, <clears throat> when you filleted it, it wasn't the firmest meat. Like yeah. it, was, it was pretty soft, wanting some parts even wanting to pull apart, especially towards the belly. But uh, cooked, you, you wouldn't think that at all. You wouldn't, you wouldn't never have known it was a softer flesh fish. Other than like, you know, in a good way. Pacific Barracuda's where it's at. This stuff is really good. Super flaky. Hella flavor. I mean, Tons of flavor, and like Brooke was saying, super moist. I mean, I hit it with some heat, gave it a real good sear, and um, like, look, even this is the bloodline after two, three days. Look, watch this. That's good. Yeah, it's, it's honestly, genuinely good. I'm kind of blown away. Like, we just ate bluefin right before this, <laughs> so I was a little skeptical. I was like, oh, we're going from bluefin to barracuda. Okay, Let's see how this goes. But honestly, it's. It's fantastic. Like Victor just said, hit it with a high heat so the outside's nice. It's got like a little crunch to it, but
but it's still nice and tender on the inside. I'm, I'm very surprised that it turned out this good. If you guys wanna check out some of the most diverse and badass SoCal content, check out Adam's channel, Fluent Fishing. Um, I kind of told him, I hyped him up. I was like, dude, you gotta start a channel because you do a lot of different stuff. Yeah, absolutely. He definitely, uh, he got me inspired to start, uh, you know, putting some some content out there and, you know, kind of sharing this lifestyle. I'm glad you got to experience, you know, the, the skiff life, um, the camping and all that stuff because that's, you know, where my heart and soul is at. But yeah, I'm excited to kind of explore and share a little bit more of my adventures and uh, hopefully have some good times out there and come visit you guys out in Florida. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Next video, you guys are going to see Dylan and Adam <laughs> out in Pompano Beach. For sure. Let's For sure. It. We'll be there. We'll try it out. Till the next time, guys. See ya.